I am finally trying out the DIY spray foam. I'm gonna be trying out two different kinds. I have the DAP touch and seal, the two-part kit, part A, part B, 600 board feet is what this kit covers. And then I found this new thing. Um, it comes in a kit with 24 cans like this. And this is supposed to, these 24 cans are supposed to cover 600 board feet as well. Um, and it was a good bit cheaper. Now the R value is lower on this one, but I decided to try both of these at the same time. I'm actually not 100% sure yet where all I'm going to be using the cans and where I'm going to be using the two-part kit. But basically what I have in mind for right now, just before uh, drywall, is right up in here I'm gonna have to do because this is gonna be a part of the attic but I got to get that done before we get drywall because this won't be accessible um, so I'm gonna close up the gap that's up in there with a little piece of foam board and then I'm gonna do the uh, spray foam up in here to where it's accessible from uh, where the rest can be got from the attic later I'm gonna walk you around, show you what I did, and give you my first impression on this stuff. After I did the roof, I probably got a thousand comments asking me why I didn't put ridge vent in, but this is why. If you do spray foam up against your roof deck, you do not need or even want uh, any ventilation in your attic. For right now though, I'm actually not spray foaming the entire attic. All I'm doing is this section right up in here where the roof rafters meet the wall just so that we can get our drywall done. And the spray foam up in the entire attic is gonna wait until later. But I went ahead and got a kit and I actually bought uh, two different kinds of spray foam kits. I came across these cans, uh, 24 cans in a pack. And I decided to try them out because they looked more convenient to use. They were advertised as more convenient to use. Uh, 24 cans covered the same amount as these two bigger uh, cylinders, 600 board feet. Um, so I tried out both of these, and I'll just say right from the start, I did not like the cans. They seemed pretty worthless to me, to be honest. So I ended up thinking, okay, I'll use those behind my uh, receptacle boxes on exterior walls. And this is basically what happened because it's so hard to apply a small amount. So I went back behind this box and try to just squirt a little bit in. Well, for that, I think you might be better off just using the disposable, the whatever, like the traditional cans to spray behind here. I don't know, because like, it just kind of exploded out of there, even with trying to just put a really small amount back in there. Now that was with the cans. Um, so again, like, 
I don't even know that I would buy it for that application. I would just take the other kit with the cylinder and go uh, around to all my receptacles and maybe spray behind those with the, the bigger kit. The reason I bought the cans in the first place is because of the convenience. The bigger kit, you can't let it sit longer than 30 seconds before you actually have to replace your tip. So you really got to keep moving with those. With the cans, I thought, hey, if I just have a small area I need to do, I'll use a can and I can use these cans up as, you know, however it's convenient for me. There's no drying out on the tips. So I bought these foam kits uh, for a few reasons. And one is right now I needed to get this done before the drywall is home because this is not going to be accessible at all after the drywall is in here. Uh, the rest of the attic, I'm going to get at a later point. But I actually put half inch rigid foam board in behind this to close up completely the little gap that was in here. And then I spray foamed over the rigid foam. And then the other thing I wanted to do is completely seal off around my rim joist. So that was the other reason that I bought the foam. And then I thought with the little cans and if I have plenty, I'm just going to go around and get all the little odd corners, uh, just do a thorough check on everything. I thought behind my uh, uh, boxes, my receptacle boxes and switches, I would put some foam back in there. And then I had these uh, bays where my mini split line sets go up through and I decided to just foam those because there was so much different stuff uh, in those bays that would have just been hard to get it real nice and tight with fiberglass. I had this area uh, on an exterior wall where I've got plumbing and a lot of different electrical and so I just filled those bays up with uh, spray foam there as well. Now with the bigger kit with the cylinders, that I found to be just a much smoother process. Um, the gun, you can get into much tighter spaces and it just applies more evenly. The foam is denser, of course. And I did know that when I bought it, that it was going to be, you know, the R value is higher on this stuff. Um, the only thing with that is you, you do have to keep moving. If you let the gun sit for 30 seconds or longer, you're going to have to replace the tip. And they do send a whole pack of tips. I think there was like, I don't know, like five of each kind. So they have like the fan uh, tip and then also just a straight tip that shoots more of a stream. Uh, so there should be plenty of tips. Uh, like I said, about five of them with the fan, but if you're going to be stopping a lot, you, you will run out of tips. So um, you will want to keep moving with that stuff, which is a little bit of a, that's probably the only con to that. Now, again, there was a learning curve to this as well. I did end up putting some of this on too thick as well. The directions say that you should have no more than a two inch application at a time, ideally one inch, but two inch max. Now, if you're going into a lot of small and tight corners um, it, where you're kind of starting and stopping a lot, that seems to be the hardest part. If you have a big, wide, open uh, bay to spray in, then I think it's easier to just kind of move along. But when you're starting and stopping in corners, it's really easy to kind of over apply and then you get kind of bigger lumps in some areas. Um, and again, you shouldn't actually have anything more than two inch according to what the directions say so for me i started back in this corner and i was just on this little like two foot section up to where you see the uh, plywood on the floor of the attic and i just moved over and if i needed to i jumped down off my ladder moved my cylinders and i could do that in less than 30 seconds so i moved my way across and had to change rooms here. That's where it got a little tricky by myself. I had to move my ladder and my cylinders over in less than 30 seconds, but I was able to do that. And again, I mean, like if you're a little bit over 30 seconds or whatever, that's just kind of the timeline uh, that your nozzle might start to kind of clog up. But that's, uh, I moved across that way, then came over all the way to the other side of the house. Again, just where the roof rafters meet the wall and worked my way across this whole wall 
And you can see where some places I have, you know, some pretty big lumps, which is not really ideal, but um, it is a, a learning process. And I was willing to learn on this out here. This is kind of the, uh, the backside of the house. This whole ceiling is not really going to be accessible after the drywall's in. So I did this entire area up in here. And I'm also going to be adding fiberglass on here um, on this ceiling. So it's going to be insulated very well. But I definitely wanted the airtight seal all the way around. So I just went in there. Same thing. This all has rigid foam board underneath. Um, and then just spray foamed over top. So it's completely airtight which means you don't need any ventilation in your attic. After I was done with all that, I brought my cylinders downstairs and went around my uh, rim boards. And I had already tried some of that with the cans. So I kind of did half of it with the cans, but there was areas that I just couldn't get. And I kind of got frustrated with the cans and just stopped and decided I was going to finish it off with the cylinders. So I still have a bunch of the cans. Uh, that I haven't used up, but I went all the way around all of my uh, rim joists and sealed everything up all the way around the house on the on the rim joists. And then, because I still had plenty, like I said before, I went uh, in where my mini split lines are. I've shown you that, um, and now I still have. I'm not sure how much I have left in the cylinders, but there's still some left. And I think you have about 30 days if you leave the, an old tip on to seal it. Um, you can store it for about 30 days. The directions say that you're supposed to spray a little bit out of the hoses like every seven days. But then you should use the entire uh, thing up within like 30 days of starting it. So from there, I am basically going to use fiberglass bat insulation on the rest of my house. Uh, just a few more notes. One is to definitely wear a uh, Tyvek suit, a respirator mask, goggles, gloves, because um, this stuff does like kind of drip off the nozzle at times. And if you're spraying up above you, it could drip down into your eyes, uh, into your face, on your clothes, whatever. So uh, Keep the stuff off your skin as much as possible for sure. Overall, my takeaway is I love this stuff to kind of have on hand. I would not get the cans again. I, I think that was just kind of a waste of money. But the cylinders, uh, the DAP touch and seal, uh, I totally love the idea of having some of that on hand. Even if you're doing your entire house uh, with fiberglass insulation, just using that on those areas where fiberglass just isn't really practical uh, around your rim joists, uh, whatever else it might be, you always have those areas where uh, fiberglass just doesn't work out the best. I, I love that idea, just keeping some of this. And then of course, it's, it's very good for like the attic situation that I have here, but also very, very expensive. So consider that the, the two cylinders, uh, were like 750. The cans that I got, they cost uh, less. I think they were 570 or something like that for the 24 cans. I will link those products uh, in the description. I got them from uh, industrial products. It was the cheapest that I could find on the uh, cylinders. And then that's where I actually came across the cans for the first time as I seen them there on their website. Something to consider in your attic if you really don't want to pay to do spray foam in the entire thing would be to put the rigid foam board, even if you want to do a few inches of rigid foam board, and then add the spray foam over top of that to get your uh, entirely airtight seal. It'll end up being a little cheaper, even though rigid foam board isn't necessarily cheap either, uh, but it's still cheaper than the spray foam. Hopefully this video helps you decide whether you want to go ahead and try out DIY spray foam. If so, if you found this video helpful, like, subscribe to my channel. Blessings on your day.